Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today I've got to take care of some business. So we're going to be uh, going to the new studio. Got to go to Canadian Tire, get some supplies. Got to do some cleaning over there. Also, I plan on bringing uh, my first Billy bookcase over there. That's what I use to display all my Lego in, like the Billy bookcases from Ikea. Got like, what, 20 of them downstairs or something like that. But luckily for me, I've got one in my garage. It's going to be easy to pop in the back of my vehicle. And bring on over to the new studio and then I can start getting some measurements of these these rooms so that I can start visualizing how we're gonna fit all of these like cases in the new studio so that's exciting also I don't know if I said it already we're going to Canadian Tire but we're also gonna to go to Costco because I need to get a cool fixture that I spotted when I was there the other day and uh, Jose and I are going to Dune tonight how exciting is that Dune 2 you excited, Jose? Very excited. Uh, it's going to be good. <sighs> Just as good as that. Look, the kids, uh, they... Benjamin, what's up, dude? You've already had second breakfast. It's not 11 Z's yet, buddy, okay? Look, we got the kids the Duplo base plate when we were at the Lego store, and they're starting to pop some bricks on it. Good. They've got the base plate, the table, Millie's stacking bricks. Good job, Millie. Nice. Master builder right there. How you doing, Stel? What's he crying about? What's he want? He wants something up there. There's <clears throat> don't want, he wants something up there. The stuff that is on the floor is not good enough. What does he want? Oh he wants his spoon. Goodness, man. There's his favorite toys, the kitchen spoons. His Mickey spoon. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Now he's happy. <laughs> you guys need to learn how to speak so you can tell us what you want instead of just crying. Look at my puppy dogs. And my wife. Hi, Mrs. Brixie. That's a good photo right there. Especially the fact that my big toe's in it. <laughs> hey. Hey. Hey, no standing on the chair. Benjamin, sit, sit on your bum, please. Benjamin. See, he does listen. He knows what we're saying. Millie. <laughs> Millie, sit on your bum, please. Good girl. What tragedy just happened to Benjamin? He lost the, the specific toy that isn't there. It's the end of the world. What is he doing? Is he on the floor? Is he throwing a tantrum? It's funny when he like doesn't get his way or something and just hack himself on the floor and like roll onto his back and go ah or charge into the corner. <laughs> it's hilarious. Kids are funny. I managed to fit the Billy bookcase in the back of my car here, but let me tell you, it almost didn't fit. Like it's right up against the seat there. And I pulled the seat as far forward as it can possibly go. And I swear there's like a millimeter of clearance. I had to like put it at this like weird angle to fit it in there. <laughs> but I really wanted to try fitting one of these in the new studio space. So it was a must. I jammed it back here and I definitely won't be transporting all of them like this because that was sort of a pain. See, it's essentially touching my passenger seat. And then when you look back there, look at that corner. It's like touching the back hatch. First off, Canadian Tire. Oh man, they sell a lot more than just tires. Hey, I'm looking at these like this would be cool. Put 700 bucks. That would be nice to have over there though. Like a nice fancy one. We have one like this for our, our mini fridge at home. Look at that one. It's got a freezer too. That one's 400 bucks. They had a selection at Walmart, but the selection here looks a lot better. So maybe when I uh, am at the mini fridge freight, <laughs> the mini fridge phase, I'll have to come here instead of Walmart. Oof, those are a little bit overkill though. Maybe not though, because I don't think that's too bad. 400 bucks, but then I get like this fridge that has like a decent sized freezer and you can fit a bunch of pop and special beverages in there. You know, that might be pretty cool. Maybe you put some sandwiches in there. <laughs> some fruit. They could have like a full out 
fridge so I can like actually eat over there and in the end it'll pay for itself because I won't be like eating out at Tim Hortons all the time or something. But this right here is the most exciting purchase of all time. I need a broom. Maybe I should go with one of these though. That might be better, hey? But I do like how this one has the, uh, the dust pan. I'm sure either will get the job done. And eventually I'm gonna get some sort of vacuum over there. Now in regards to the broom, I know I should probably get a big push broom, but I already have a push broom, so I don't need one of those. But eventually I'll probably get one of these bad boys so I can zip around with the vacuum. And eventually I'll probably have one of these zipping around as well. I need one of these, probably one with a large canister. Oh yeah, look at all the variety here though. Holy cow. Okay, remember the other day when I went to Walmart and I was looking for a garbage can and I was like, man, there's not a good selection here at all. They're either like super industrial or like super fancy for like a kitchen. And it's like, look at uh, Canadian Tire here. They've got every type of garbage can that you could possibly imagine. So this is definitely a better place to come for like any sort of cleaning supplies or whatever it may be. So I'm for sure gonna get one of these for my 75 liter garbage bags. Oh, so much variety though. I might be here for like an hour or two. <laughs> I promise this is my last clip about garbage cans and cleaning supplies, all right? And I'm stuck between two choices here. I could get this tall, skinny one, which might be pretty cool because it fits a larger bag. I'd have to get the 110 liter bags. Or I could get this smaller one, which comes with a lid. I like the fact that it comes with a lid. And that fits the bags that I already bought, which of course are the 75 liter bags. Ah, do I go with bigger, with no lid, skinny, or do I go with small with a lid and already have the bags for it? And the bags are much cheaper as well. Ah, decisions, decisions, hey? Eh? Who knew that buying a garbage can would be so tough? What to do, what to do? I ended up going with the smaller can, which is on sale. Hey, look, this is on sale too. They sell Lego here as well. There's probably more of it in this aisle. No, 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 that's where the Barbies are. Maybe in this aisle? No, that's where the axes are. That's a great pair up right there. We got some Lego, we got some axes. They go hand in hand. It's funny though, after buying the garbage can in the room, I ran out to my car and then I looked at my list of things to do and I was like, oh, I forgot an extension cord, so I gotta come back in. But then uh, I got distracted by the Lego and also the Soilers t-shirt. They usually have more Lego though. I don't see any more in their toy aisle. So maybe they're slowing down on the Lego front. At least at this location, maybe. There's more on this end cap here. It's like the Sonic stuff, which is on sale. Regular 130 on for 90. And another Sonic here for 45. Regular 65. So that end cap goes way up there. And then this end cap also goes way up there. Outdoor extension cords aren't cheap. 25 bucks for a 10 footer if you want to get something long so I can like vacuum up in the mezzanine space. Look at that. $50.99 for a longer extension cord. Like, are you kidding me? 32 feet, 10 inches. How long was that blue one? Oh, that's 32 feet, 10 inches as well. Oh, okay. That's not too bad then. I guess those ones are just like higher quality. I thought this was only 10 feet for a second, but it's 32 feet. Okay, well that I can, I can justify. <laughs> but I, I was blown away for a second. I was like, what the heck? Why are they $60? Oh my gosh. Okay, this one for 25 bucks though, it's coming with me. It's another one of those scenarios where like, of course I have an extension cord at home, but I use that extension cord for like my power tools in my garage or my Christmas decorations or whatever it may be. So it's almost like I need a second set of supplies for another location because I don't want to rob everything from my house because then when I need it there, I'm not gonna have it. First off, I want to give you a little bit of a construction update here. So the other day, we ripped down a wall and that wall was located in this room. So this room was subdivided into two smaller rooms. Now it's one wide open room. Today is Sunday, so there's no tradespeople working today, but my handyman was here yesterday and he started patching the walls in here and also cutting them in as well. 
So he's starting the paint project in here, which is fantastic. The paint is an off-white. It's white with three drops of black, which is going to help with camera exposure. So that is excellent. Uh, he also started patching the ceiling because when we ripped that wall out, some holes were left. And there's also a big hole here that he patched, so that's good. And then we still need to fix up the floor, but that'll uh, happen after painting. So he's going to repaint all the walls. It's going to take two coats. And he's also going to repaint the entire ceiling once we get these light fixtures down. So it's all matchy-matchy. And that's going to look good. And he also started patching it here as well. And these two rooms will be the exact same color. It's that white color. And then the blue that you see on the walls in here and also in the back bay, that's the color that's going to be there. Just because repainting all of that would be... A nightmare. I noticed that he uh, actually gutted one of the bathrooms because there is a toilet there and also a sink. So that's exciting. Uh, this bathroom here has officially been gutted. And oh, it looks like he did some patching in here too. Excellent. So this bathroom is going to be the bathroom that, I, that we use. We don't have a need for two bathrooms, but so we're going to leave this one because we need to use a bathroom during construction. But eventually we're going to turn this into a storage room and this one here is going to be the bathroom that we use with an industrial sink so that's excellent now in regards to the flooring there's been a lot of comments about what I should do with the flooring in here and in my official review video I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do I, I thought originally ah, I just want to clean it and just make it clean most of this area back here is going to be consumed by tables so you're not really going to see the floor but then I got thinking to myself, oh, if I'm walking on this floor constantly, my knees might start to hurt if I have to crawl. You know, it's just not going to be good for my body long term. So I decided that I want to put tile, or sorry, carpet down here, carpet tile specifically. And this is the carpet tile we're going to run with. It wasn't my first choice, but hear me out on why we're going to use this carpet tile. So this is a two foot by two foot section of carpet so it's four square feet it has some browns some grays and also some blues it's much darker than what i would ideally want to use i thought i'd want to use like a light colored carpet down here and also up in my filming area just because it would make the area brighter but the reality is once i get all new light fixtures in here that are led they're going to like increase the amount of light in a big way. Also, this whole area is probably going to be filled with a Lego city, so you're not going to see this carpet very much. And also, carpet tiles for good ones like this one here in Canada range from about $2.50 to $4 per square foot. It's got like the vinyl back, and this is pretty thick. It's going to be nice for padding this but what's the benefit of using this color well this one here doesn't cost three dollars say this one only costs a dollar per square foot and to give you an idea of how many square feet we need it's 2500 square feet so 2500 square feet a dollar per square foot is 2500 dollars <laughs> that's quite a bit of money right yeah, but if you were to go with a nicer one that's a lighter color, it would be upwards of $3 per square foot. Now we're talking $7,500 just for material, which is pretty insane. Why is that carpet tile so cheap? Well, that's because my handyman, who's a beauty, actually sourced those used. So we're actually going to be getting those, and they're slightly used. And... It's going to save us a big chunk of change in that. So it's not the ideal color, but it's growing on me. It's a little bit dark, but I think there's going to be a lot of light in here with the wall color, also with the lighting. And I'm okay with a little bit of the darker color just because it'll be a nice contrast. I don't mind it. And also it's like one third the price. So got to factor that in as well. And this is what we would call a used carpet. Does it look used? No, it doesn't. So we're going to run with that for a dollar a square foot. Not too bad. So also yesterday, which was Saturday, I was lucky enough to have 
the furnace gentleman stop by, who's going to be taking care of the radiant heat and also <laughs> replacing this archaic beast right here. And I've got some good news in, in uh, relation to this. He's going to be replacing all of this. And also those big steel pipes are going to be changed to PFC, or not steel, but aluminum or whatever the heck they are, is going to be changed to PVC. So it's going to be a lot cleaner. He's going to be able to run them up the side of the wall too. Excellent news. <laughs> Excellent news. I'm not sure about this here. I was talking about it. This is actually a air return. I was hoping to reduce the size of this, but there is a standard that it has to be 16 inches. We're gonna see if you can flip it up on its side and somehow reduce the size of that and just improve the look of it. Now the radiant heat actually has to run through the center. Now originally I thought the electricians were gonna run a third section of light going through the center. They're starting tomorrow, which is Monday. Uh, so. That was the original plan, but the radiant heat needs clearance from the light because the radiant heat will actually melt the light fixtures and you can't really have them above or below the radiant heater, so it needs that center track. So what we're going to do, I've got 22 8-foot light fixtures coming in. We're going to run them sideways. See how these ones here are sideways, those four-footers right there? So we're going to run them sideways like this. There'll be 11 on each side, and they're going to span the entire ceiling and that's going to give us enough clearance for the radiant heat which will run through the center. We're going to get a 50 foot radiant heater which is going to start over there and run pretty close to the back. It's going to be about 20 feet where there is no radiant heat but I think it'll be enough because we're going to have a furnace that's going to be heating the front area and then we're going to have the radiant heat which is heating my workplace all the way to the back here. And we want to have it in the center because it's going to evenly distribute the heat throughout the whole like warehouse area, which is essential because I want to be warm in here. So that's sort of where we're at with construction. Um, tomorrow, the electricians are starting. I uh, can't get the furnace and also the radiant heat done until the following Monday. So when I'm filming this video eight days from now, which is fine. And then also... Uh, this week I'm going to be getting internet in here, so hopefully we can start doing some live streams and stuff in this place, which is pretty exciting. Looks like uh, we've got some wood here as well, and this is going to be the wood that's going to be used to frame the wall, which goes around the furnace room, and we can't start on that particular project until the furnace is installed, just for easy access. And that's going to be a 12-foot wall to give you an idea how tall that is that's the length of these two by fours over here these are two by four by twelve so yeah let's hop up on this ladder let's do it here Woo! pretty cool so yeah lots of uh, progress has been made and today I want to talk about billy cabinets and start doing some measurements with those I've got my extension cord now so I could actually reach my shop back into the far corners over here. So that's good. And then, uh, yeah, I got to go to Costco as well. Just hanging out in here, working on this project and just, you know, visualizing things as we go along is, is going to be a lot of fun. And it's a great way to change up my day. I'm having a tremendous amount of fun with this project. Lighting, heat, paint carpet tile, new washroom, staircase also is going to be boxed in. It's, it's going to be brilliant. Also the wall going up there, there's just so many things that are happening. And within the next three weeks, it's all going to come together, I hope. Well, I can confirm that the new broom works. What I want to do, I know it seems ridiculous, but I want to clean this up even though construction is ongoing. I've been saying I'm going to do this for a while. I just want to like mop this area and see what this place would look like if it was actually clean. I'm not gonna mop the entire area, but like, come on, how can I look at that? I'm here every day, I don't wanna look at that anymore. I wanna just like clean up some of this muck. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous, but I wanna get all this stuff off the floor. I guess it's not that ridiculous. Like, I don't wanna look at that every day, do I? No, no, I don't. What do you think, everybody? Is that a little bit easier to look at? I think so. Definitely worth like the hour of my time or whatever. Like it looks so gross and now it looks actually pretty decent. I mean the floor's in rough shape but it's gonna get carpeted anyway but like 
I just wanted to like see it sparkling. And I mean, I could wash it to no end, but my bucket water is uh, getting pretty gross. I don't think I needed to buy the fancy, always clean water. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be always clean. Uh, I'll have to rinse it thoroughly and then I'll use it at home. Or it's not like the front area over here is gonna be carpeted, so I'm gonna have to mop this tile once in a while. I guess I'll just keep it here. Not bad though. That looks a little bit better, that's for sure. It was looking pretty gross over there by the big door. Not anymore. There we go, 20 feet down, 40 to go. I don't think I'm gonna mop over here just because this floor is relatively clean. Not really though, this like spill, it really bothers me. I don't know if I can look at that for like the next three weeks because the last thing we're gonna do is of course install the carpet. That's gotta wait. But I'm excited to grab this tape measure here and start measuring some Billy bookcases. So I don't know exactly how the shelving setup is gonna be. It's gonna be really hard to determine that without actually having all the shelving units here because we have the Billy bookcases. We also have the PAX wardrobe units and then there's also the corner cases so I can like make the corners flow nicely. And those are like the ones that are the half Billy bookcases and the ones that I have the brick heads in. But I can get a ballpark idea of how many I can fit in here by taking the measurements of all of the walls. And that's exactly what I did. And then I wrote it down on this piece of paper here, just made like a little blueprint. So I measured everything, but I didn't factor in the front walls because the front walls are where the uh, heat registers are and also where the windows and door is. So I don't really wanna account for that space, although we will be putting something on those walls, but I just don't know exactly what I'm gonna fit on those walls or how I'm gonna treat them. So I left those out of the equation and I've got some good news. In this room here, not including the wall with the window, uh, we can fit 17 Billy bookcases and I actually rounded that. So for example, this wall back here, I'm gonna use inches everybody, is 137 inches. It can fit 4.35 Billy bookcases or 3.4 PAX units. This wall right here, it's uh, 238 inches. It can fit 7.5 Billy bookcases or six PAX units. So when I added up the numbers, I didn't include the 0.6s because you can't get 7.6 Billy bookcases. You can only get seven. So I added up the, the total numbers routing down and you can fit 17 Billy bookcases in this room. And you can also fit 17 Billy bookcases in this room. And that doesn't include the front wall, well, where we will be able to put more. So grand total, that is 34 Billy bookcases. That's way more than we have right now. At first, I was a little bit concerned about the shelving area. I didn't think it would be enough space. But now when I have a look at this diagram, I, I realize that there's a lot of space. You see what I did? I put the inch measurement on the exterior. So 37 or 137 inches is that back wall. And then up to the door there is 104 inches. And then below that number, inside the square, I put how many Billy bookcases, that's the top number, 3.3, .3, and how many PAX units, 2.6. It's pretty cool that we'll be able to fit six PAX units exactly on this wall here. And I did account for that little weird thing there. But the issue is, once again, you don't know where these are gonna go because there's a heat vent right there. So how am I gonna treat that? Or for example, in this back wall here, you wanna put a bunch of Billy bookcases. Well, there's the cold air return. With that said, I do have 16 inches of height clearance from the ceiling, so I'll be able to put some sets up top. And I wonder how far down that cold air return comes. Let's see, one foot. So there you go, a Billy bookcase can go right there. We can fit them all the way along, so that's positive. But with that said, there's all these weird, electrical boxes that pop off the wall so they won't be able to be like right up against the wall and there's all sorts of this stuff because this is like an industrial unit so they use conduit it's not actually built into the wall so therefore the cabinets have to be whatever that is an inch and a half or two inches off the wall so there's a lot of like different ways to treat this and it's sort of strange so behind me is the front door and my plan is to actually have the cabinets come this way and then turn and come off the wall this way. And this that's gonna create this little entrance right here. 
So the cabinets are actually going to be on the, like this. I'm going to create an entrance using those cabinets. I'm going to put some nice wood on the back side of one of those cabinets. And then this is going to be like a little mud room where I can put my shoes, hang my coat and all that. And it's just going to look a little bit better when we walk into these rooms. So you'll see like when I come this way, you'll see a cabinet there blocking the front door and then there'll be more cabinets sort of going around. That's actually a really good idea. Jose came up with it. It's also going to help block the dust that's going to come into the door when I when I come in and out of this workplace. This one came out of my garage. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that's pretty gross, eh? But I'm pretty excited about that. That's 34 Billy bookcases. Like, that is a lot. I don't know how many are in my basement, but it's definitely not 34. Like, nowhere close to 34. But with that said, in my basement, I also have the uh like the little diorama tables but we can run those in the center here we can even put the billy bookcases that are half the size if we wanted we could put them back to back running through the center of this larger room so we could put like an island of billy bookcases in the center if we so choose uh or we could put the best uh tv cabinets that i use for my diorama tables in the center and we could do that over here as well. But it really depends where the PAX units go because they're so deep. So there's just like, it's, it's going to be really hard to figure out the exact design until I actually get all of the cabinets that I own in here. But I think they're all going to fit no problem and there's going to be room for a bunch more. But the shelving areas are going to have to consume or have to accommodate all the stuff that I have on the track shelves as well. Maybe track shelves are the way to go. Maybe we should put track shelves on this wall on both sides. Maybe that'll be the way to go. I really don't know until we get there, but I just want to start planning it out because why wouldn't I? I'm excited about this new project. You know what I haven't done? Is unleashed an echoing woohoo. Woohoo! <laughs> it's Sunday, so nobody's in the neighboring units. We can be as loud as we want. I should throw on some music. It's funny, in my official reveal video, I was going on about how cold it was in here. It was 11 degrees and then I, said that this number here was it in Fahrenheit but no 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 that's what temperature it was set to but obviously the furnace isn't working <laughs> it was set to that crazy temperature but right now we're relying on the sun and the neighboring units woohoo I'm happy with the clean floor definitely pretty happy with the decision that we're going to be adding carpet to the back bay here just going to make it so much better and then I'm really happy about the fact that we're going to be able to fit 17 billies per room. 34 billy bookcases in here. The exact math of everything is going to be rather difficult, but one thing I haven't mentioned is the fact that I'm okay with putting holes in this ceiling. I don't care about this ceiling. I, I don't care. I'm going to be hanging Lego from the ceiling in this studio as well. So if I need, if, sorry, if I run out of room on these shelves, which I don't think we're going to, but I can start hanging stuff from the ceiling and that might be pretty cool, whether it be planes or uh, starships. Yeah. And then the city is just gonna be, whew, amazing. All right, well, I think I've done enough for this lovely Sunday. I was glad that I was able to come on by and just take care of some stuff and uh, just run, run that air in there and drop this Billy bookcase off and start to visualize how many we can fit. That's just like a, a weight on my shoulders that has been relieved just because I was I was truly uh, like in sort of limbo about what we were going to do with the shelving but now I know we can fit a ton in here and like this room is massive so like I said double-sided billy bookcases in here in the center maybe would be pretty cool uh, but now we're going to head on out and go to Costco farewell studio I've got to say I have a really fun time coming here every single day However, I'm going to be uh, burning a little bit more gas than I'm used to. <laughs> it's one expense that you sort of got to factor in. But by golly, another day down and I cannot wait to start this week because the majority of the construction is going to be done this week. So I got to Costco and I grabbed my big cart and I came to this aisle because this is where they have the sinks. And not too long ago when I was here, they had like this giant utility sink and it used to be right there. And guess what? They're sold out. That utility sink was like $350. I thought it was a really good deal because it was like the cabinet. It was like that, but bigger and a utility sink and the big faucet on top. And it turns out they sold them all. I checked Home Depot. They're like double the price. 
they do have some on costco.ca but they can be up to like 14 days for delivery but with that said the reviews online are all like terrible like it's apparently a terrible product and there's one at home depot that's 550 and has a lot of good reviews so maybe it's you know a blessing in disguise maybe the one here at costco is a piece of crap maybe i gotta go to home depot and get the better one it's 200 more dollars but it has way better reviews rave reviews compared to crap reviews so i'm thinking this is a blessing in disguise everybody and looking even further into home depot they have like three or four different options starting at that like 360 dollar price point up to like $800 depending on what you want to get so I think that's gonna be the better solution anyway better variety better product there you go Costco let me down and I'm thankful for it to say the least I am very curious to find out how many Billy bookcases are down here one two three up against the wall four five two half units make six seven eight nine ten eleven 11 okay and then these ones i'd say that's probably adds up to three so we'll call that 14 15 16 call it 16 at most and we can fit that all in one room what <laughs> are you kidding me <laughs> but i have to figure out like how it's gonna flow like these flow quite nicely and there's the full ones and then there's the half one with the brick heads and then I've got a slight angle there and then another half one. So I've really worked out how to fit the shelving down here. And I'm gonna have to do the same thing over there just based on where all of those things that you saw earlier are. So it'll be some trial and error, but boy, oh boy, I can't wait. I can't believe it. Like, you know what I mean? Like when I go over there and look at that place, it's like, well, the shelving area doesn't look that big. How am I gonna fit all these shelves down there? or in that area. And it's like, what? You can fit like almost double? No way. Like, it's so hard to visualize because this area just looks so big compared to the area up front there, but I guess it's not. Like, it's pretty wild. But then there's all the stuff on the track shelves, the bulkhead shelves, more track shelves over there, and then all of this stuff that I need to build still, and then all the track shelves here. But maybe the, the smaller room like I can run the, like I was saying, I can put the half billies in the center or I can run these best units in the middle and then I'll be able to put the Lego Star Wars UCS sets that used to be there on display in the middle and make that sort of like my Star Wars room, hang some starships from the roof, put the billy units with all of the other smaller Star Wars stuff around like in the back corner, even if it's like half the room is all Star Wars because there's no way I'll be able to fill the entire room. But yeah, that's going to look super cool. Okay, now I feel really good about the shelving i was sort of doubting it but after doing those measurements i feel so happy i'm glad i went over there today it just feels good going over there like changes up my day changes up my week just going over there go for a drive stop off somewhere pick up some stuff you know make a little improvement here and there i cannot wait for the trades to start once the trades start once the lighting is in too like the lighting is going to be amazing. It's going to be, it's going to transform the place completely. Also, uh, it transforms that carpet. I didn't show you that carpet tile down here, uh, but in this light, which is like the 4,000 K, uh, light, it just so bright and, and really hits those blue notes. And really, it really does pop. So yeah, I can't wait for the lighting. I hope they can get the lighting done this week. Oh, that's going to be killer. That's going to make that place really like night and day. It's going to be amazing. So yeah, I'm back home and the kids are about to have their 83rd snack. And then my mom's going to look after the kids. Jose and I are going to Dune tonight. Whew. It's funny when I was doing the Lego store shopping video, I was saying, yeah, we're going out tonight. I couldn't remember even what day it was and when we were going, but no, we're going on Sunday night and we're seeing it in IMAX. I saw the original Dune, like Dune, the first part, in IMAX with Jose and I thought it was incredible. I didn't want to leave the theater. I wanted to keep watching more and I'm glad that we're gonna be able to continue watching more tonight. So I'm back home and it's four o'clock. This is sort of what I want my day to be like. I, I can't say that I'll always be home at four o'clock, but Mrs. Brixie's editing the video that I filmed today and I'm gonna hang out with the kids, but I foresee it being a little bit of a longer day. Like I was there, I think I got there by like 
I don't even know. I can't even remember. I don't know, 10 or something like that? Maybe 11 after I stopped off at Canadian Tire. Then I just hung, hung out there for a bit. And then I'm home by four. And then I edit and hang out with the family here, do the majority of the editing and all the other behind the scenes work. And then I have a nice split up to my day. So it's not like I will never see my kids. It's, it's going to take a while to get like into the rhythm of things. And of course, I'll be over there for longer periods of time when I'm taking on bigger projects, say I'm building a mountain or whatever it may be, I'll be over there a little bit later. But what I could always do is leave in the morning, hang out there, film a bunch of video, come home, drop that video off. Mrs. Brixie can maybe edit it or we'll hang out and have dinner together or whatever. And then I can go back over there that night or take off where I left off in the morning. And I just want to make sure that we have a work-life balance because I love hanging out with my kids and family too. So I'm going to make sure that that remains a, uh, a priority in my life, obviously. Yeah, look at them. They're playing with tinfoil. Now they're starting to shred tinfoil. Benjamin must have stepped on Tico's tail. I'm surprised he didn't go row. That's a cat noise. Whatever noise Tico would make. But you stepped on his tail and he, and he ran away. His dad's coffee, bud. Going on a nice date here. Home Depot. Exciting times, exciting times. Look at that. We're going to be getting one of these bad boys. So $459, but you get the sink, you get the cabinet, the whole works. It's going to be perfect. I think that looks pretty good. What do you think, Jose? No, I like it. We can get the smaller one too. So the smaller one is the same price as the one from Costco, but we can fit up to 34 inches. So this one here is only 24.7 inches so i think we should get the bigger one what do you think may as well may as well i know it's a hundred more dollars but we're gonna have more cabinet space underneath so regret it in the long run. no see this one here has got the stainless steel top you get this one here which is like the nice quartz top it's a hundred more dollars though also the handles are bigger and i think this is nicer as well mm. Maybe not actually, or does it, it must detach. It does, I was playing with it. Oh yeah, that is nice. But this one, the the thing does pull out. See, it says right here, pull down faucet. So I don't think it's worth the extra hundred dollars for the upgrade. Bleeding enough on this uh, renovation, that's for sure. Is this a tradition? Is it? I'd say it's a tradition. Kind of is, like our movie, or like our movie, yeah. Anytime we get to go for dinner first. So Bubba Gump's is right above the Lego store, and above that is the movie theater, and we like coming here. We haven't been here in a while, though. Over a year, I'd say. Probably. I think we've only been here once since the kids were born. Yeah. So exciting. Oh. I love this place. Woohoo! Mrs. Brixie came up with an idea. It, I swear it wasn't me. She's like, listen, we never go out. We never have any fun. No, I said, when was the last time you had a bulldog? That's what I said. Yeah, and that was like, we never go out. We're going to the movie. We may as well have some fun. So I ordered a mango one. She ordered a strawberry one. It's like a bulldog, but a margarita. Ooh. Yeah, it's true. Look at that. Sugar rim. There's mango. And a little Corona. <laughs> Great idea, she's a Great idea. Classic chicken sammy with the guac. Mashed potatoes. she has got the same, same, but different. Like seriously though, how beauty is this? We've got the Santa Maria pirate ship on the world's largest indoor lake. And over here, we got the movie that we're going to. And then the Lego store. And then of course, Bubble Gumps. It's just a beauty setup. At the movie theater, you just take the escalator right up there. Gotta love that. Look at that Lamborghini. I like how they leave it lit up during the night. And this guy. Tis the season, everybody. Very beat loop. So 
I know there's been a lot of talk about Dune Part 2, and I gotta say that I liked it. I enjoyed it. I was a bit confused in the middle there for just a wee bit, but I think the action scenes were pretty cool. There were some slow parts, which is to be expected, but I think the characters were great, and overall I thought it was a great sequel. Like, it definitely did not disappoint me. I liked the first movie, I liked the second movie, I can't wait for the third movie, and I think it was pretty sweet. Yeah, I don't really want to do like a whole movie review because it's late at night and I've been going all day, but I think it was enjoyable. And if you have a chance to see it in IMAX, I definitely would recommend it. I think seeing it in IMAX takes it to a whole new level. Uh, I, I don't think it's the same as watching it on like a regular movie screen and or at home. However, I am a subtitle guy, so I didn't hear a lot of the quiet conversation. It's brutal. I just can't hear things so I am excited to watch it at home so I can read all the subtitles because I fully like me sadly I, I truly don't fully get every single movie and hear everything when I even in a theater surrounding because I just I can't hear it so I need subtitles so there is that aspect of it for that reason I actually much I much prefer Dune I really liked it in the theater like the first one but then when I saw it again with subtitles I like it just like made me love it even more. So I'm sure when I see the second one with subtitles, I'll once again love it even more. But yeah, lots of exciting stuff happening in the new studio. And I'm excited to move forward with that. Had a great day today. It was a fantastic Sunday. Everybody, thank you so much for coming on by. Please remember to like, subscribe, and stay tuned. Farewell.